Welcome to the next part of our study of the journey. We're now going to go on to rounds number 11 through 19 today. And what I need to tell you on round number 19 there is something missing from the instruction and all it is is that at the end of the instruction it should say join and that is missing. So you'll find those kind of the uh, errors in our more information of this video in the link if you would like to know what those are and those are ones that were found after we went to uh, print. So let's begin and we're gonna pick up where we were. I am going to keep the same color as I mentioned before and let's continue to round number 11. So I'm going to pick up where, where, where I was and I just slip stitched if you recall in the last segment and I'm just gonna chain one and I'm going to single crochet into that same one. Now the straggler or the tail end is still hanging out of that stitch. So instead of having to sew that in later just put it around the chain and trap it. In these chain five spaces I need you to put in six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five and six. These will spread out so if it's bunching like that don't worry about it just keep on going and you'll notice that it will balance out. So continuing along so the next single crochet will get a single crochet and then each one of the space the chain five spaces will get six single crochet and I need you to do that all the way around for round number 11. I'll see you at the end of this round. So when you get around you're going to just slip stitch it to the first one. I am going to eliminate the color. So let's begin round number 12. What I'm about to show you is going to help you a lot to speed your way through this next process because we're gonna do the foundations of 16 sunbursts. So what we have here is see this peak here? Follow it up to the single crochet that's in this one and that's where I want you to start and this will keep the sunburst uh, equal to here. There is 16 altogether and there's 16 of these petals. So join it with the standing single crochet. I demonstrated that in video one and that's your first single crochet. Watch what I do because this will save you time. You need to chain eight but watch how I do it. So I say one, two, three, four, five, six, pinch, seven and eight. And right where I pinched is the first stitch that you need to apply. And I need you to do the single crochets in the um, in this chain work. So we're gonna do one single crochet third chain from the hook which is where I've pinched on the sixth one. And just move your thumb out of the way and get the back hump of that chain and single crochet. Now I need you to do the rest of the five that are left. So just coming down that chain. So one, two, three, four, and five and that took you all the way back down to where that single crochet was. So now I have to get you to come across. So we're going to single crochet in the next stitch right here. So right here and you're gonna single crochet in the next uh, uh, six. So starting with the next one here so do the next six in a row. So we have one, whoops, so we have one, two, three, four, five and six. And now the repeat is going to start. So let's do one repeat. So we're gonna single crochet in the next stitch. It should be right up above the next one. So you'll single crochet it there and then you'll chain your eight again and do that technique that I showed you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, pinch, seven, and eight. And that right where I'm pitching is the first one. So go there and then do the remaining five that are left. So one, two, three, four, and five. And starting in the next stitch right down here you're doing the next six again. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 12. As I'm coming all the way around I wanna show you a cheating technique and you know accidents happen and when I was doing this particular uh, row or uh, round right here remember how it was six into the chain five I missed it and I only did five. So what I did is that I put two extra or sorry I put an extra one in the one here. I don't wanna change the look 
of this. So originally I could just go back into this but then it will look different from the rest. So if that happens to you just slam in an extra stitch where you think you need to just to make sure that you can keep that stitch count because that's really critically important and on the end of the day you probably never even notice that unless you point it out to somebody. So that's something that you can move on to and I'm still working on this but I wanted to give you that tip just in case that happens to you so that you don't have the frog back meaning to rip it out. So I'm coming all the way to around to the end and I'm just doing my last six. So three, four, five and six and that takes you all the way back to the very beginning and that's where I need you then to, is just to attach to the first single crochet and what I'm going to do for this is that I need to, I wanna keep this color but I need to end this color now so I can reset it into a different position for round number 13 which is going to be the more interesting round as far as like getting the sunburst to happen. So if you want the middle of the sunburst to be a different color so you can keep this this color and your sunburst can be a different um, uh, uh, like a wedge shape can be a different color. You can decide I'm gonna keep mine the same. So let's move on to round number 13. I want you to locate the middle one of the group here. So there is just to use your thumbs and you can find it. So one, two, three. There's, it's the middle one. Okay, so it's the fourth one in. And that's where I want you to start and I want you to do a standing single crochet and if you prefer the a join and a chain one and single crochet that's up to you. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to play going up and down this particular piece. So we're only gonna attach in the middle section here just to stabilize it. So we're going to start with the first two here. It is the fourth one away if you wanna count that out and it's gonna be a two together treble. So wrap the hook twice, start in the first one noticing that I'm putting the yarn straggler, the loose end with it so that it can get stuck underneath. So I'm gonna pull through two and two and hold and then I'll do the next one. So wrap twice, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. So this is going to be a two together treble so you'll wrap and pull through all three loops and there it is. The next one is going to be then a double cr crochet going up. So we're gonna do a double crochet going up. Then we need to do two half double crochets in a row. So they're in their own stitches. So we have one and two and then the very last stitch that's left with you is going to be a single crochet. And then we're gonna go into the peak and up over the edge. So in this space right here in the peak I need you to put in three single crochets to be able to come back down the other side. So one, two and three. Now I want you to come back down the other side so just turn your work if you want to and starting in the very first one you're going to single crochet and it's just opposite to how you came up. So it's gonna be a single, there will be two halves in a row and then we're going to do a double crochet and then the very final two that are left right here is going to be a two together treble and that expands it to get to the width that you need. Once you have that secured pull through all three and then go. So you just have to look for the middle one of the group in between and that's where you'll single crochet it and it'll stabilize and make itself solid. Not pretty cool? So I'm gonna show you again. Wrap the hook twice and you're gonna start with the first one that comes up. It's the fourth one away and you'll put the first two together with the treble. Pull through all three loops. The next one is one double crochet by itself. The next two in a row are each a half double crochet. So we need to get that angle to be perfect. I had to keep testing and testing and testing when I was doing this one. So now the last one that's coming up on this side will be a single crochet and now let's go into the peak. So the space in the peak is gonna be three single crochets. So one, two and three. Let's just kinda shift it around because it's easier and we're going to come down the other side. So it's just opposite to how you came up so it's going to be a single and then there will be two halves in a row 
one and two and then the next one is one double crochet and then the very final two that are left is a two together treble. This is really a visual eye catcher on this one so it's worth the time if you think it's taken forever. So pull through all three and look for the middle one of the group and single crochet and I need you to do that all the way around and you'll have these beautiful um, sun strokes or sun bursts coming out of your work. Let's uh, continue and I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number 13. So I'm coming to the end of number 13. So are you glad that I actually applied it now and not waited until this thing got much bigger? <laughs> it's always a silver lining right? So once you get your last uh, two together for the treble just attach it to the first single crochet and then eliminate this yarn. You'll wanna change the color of the yarn I think in order to keep this really being outstanding and choose a color for the next round number 14 which will make these just absolutely pop off your your afghan. So let's uh, end this color and let's pick up on round number 14 next. As we start round number 14 I'm gonna give you a couple options and now that I'm looking at the pattern you know looking at it a year later you're thinking why didn't you do that instead? <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a couple options. So originally what's going to happen with this the way that it's written is that you're just gonna come into the single crochet that's in between these and you were just going to start there and you're going to chain a total of five which will be counted as a double treble and then you will put in another six double trebles into the same one and then you'll chain one and then single crochet into the middle one here. It's a tutorial so I'm allowed to and it's my own pattern too. I'm going to substitute, I'm gonna just change the instruction here just in tutorial format. I want you to pick the top peak. I'm not even sure why I didn't do that before. So pick the top peak one. It's the middle single crochet of the grouping of three and start with a standing single crochet. We're doing the same thing it's just starting at a different spot. So now just chain one and put in in the same one down here put in seven double trebles. So wrap in the hook three a total of three times. So you'll have four loops in the hook before you go into the stitch and then going in and you wanna pull through two, two, two and two. So you need to do that a total of seven times. So this is going to fill in that space that you have and so you'll be sick and tired of uh, double troubles by the end of this round but it does a great job and when you think about it this last round plus this round that we're about to do has created so, so much distance that that's why I wanted to apply it. So continue to do that so that you have seven double troubles. So I'll keep moving here. So this part in the tutorial or in the pattern when I was developing it, it took me a bit of time to actually figure this out to get this to make sure that it would sit flat. So this pattern over time probably took me about a month to develop and it was just an, and it was over actually three months that is I designed it but I would put it down. And so I would think about what I wanted to do next and then continue. Once you see seven chain one to create a space and then come to the peak of the next one it's the middle one of the grouping of three and single crochet and I need you to do that all the way around. So you can see it fills in that space. So begin with the chain one, seven double uh, double trebles down into here, chain one and then it's single crochet in the peak and do that all the way around for round number 14. So now coming to the end of number 14 I'm just gonna chain one after I did my grouping of seven double trebles. I bet you're glad never to do those again. I don't think I have those in the pattern anymore. Uh, like any further. So you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first or to the beginning single crochet. You're going to notice that it's gonna look a little roughly. You gotta trust in this pattern because the next round we're going to stabilize and I would get rid of this color and choose a color that you think is just gonna absolutely pop and uh, you can keep the same color. It's up to you. It's your creativity at the end of the day. So choose something and uh, or make a decision and let's begin uh, round number 15. So round number 15 I'm going to choose the same color as I did uh, here so that I can kind of continue that ring idea. So that to me is outstanding. <laughs> it may not be for you but it's up to you. It's your creativity as I mentioned. So what we need to do is that we're going to get this and we're gonna start with a single crochet in the top of any one of the stitches. I'm just gonna choose a top peak. Why not? Because it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna do a standing single crochet. So each space 
is a chain one space. So just fill in the space with a single crochet and then the tops of each one of the trebles will each be a single crochet as well. So just fill in all the stitch work uh, that you have. Every stitch gets something and then the chain one space uh, also gets just one single crochet in each and this will help stabilize the circle. See I just went right into the space not even thinking about it and just kind of coming up and over and into the middle one and then into the next space and etc. So that's what I'm gonna do and that's round number 15. I'll be back in a moment. So now that I came all the way back around I just gotta fill in that space just before I attached it if you recall and then I'm just going to slip stitch and I'm gonna end this yarn and I want to join a new color and I'll be back in just a moment as we continue our journey into round 16 next. As we continue into number 16 I'm gonna show you a technique. You can do two things. So I want you to follow it up. See this grouping of seven? I want you to follow the one up here right where I'm moving my thumb. Follow that one and that's where I want you to start. So you can either join and then chain three which will count as a double crochet or what you can do which I'm going to demonstrate is do a standing double crochet. It looks nicer. So you're just going to go in. So wrap, so put this onto the hook. Wrap the hook. You need to uh, push this down so that it will not unspin itself and then going into that same stitch that I just showed you. Put the straggler down on top so that it will hold it underneath and then pull through and then pull through two and two. And this is called the standing double crochet and it looks a lot nicer. So what I need you to do is in every stitch all the way around is just a dub double crochet and I'll be meeting you back up in just a moment. When you do cross over anything that is a slip knot or like a slip stitch at the end make sure that you don't include that extra little space that you see as a stitch. So just double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around and this will also stabilize this to even sit more flat than it currently is. So let's continue this. This is round number 16. I'm gonna show you a cheating technique that I would do if you weren't watching me. And we have this slip stitching that creates this extra uh, stitch. It's not a stitch but it looks like it is. So what I normally do and I do this in my hats for sure is that I wrap the hook and I do and I go into that space that is created when you join it and pull through two and hold and then I go into the real stitch and then pull through two and hold and I pull that together. So what I'm doing is that I'm filling in that space that is not a stitch but I'm still maintaining it so that it has one on top. This is only considered one stitch. That's something that you can consider doing and you can see it looks like it's actually finished too. So now you can slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet that you had or the chain three depending how you wanted to do it and I'm going to eliminate this yarn and we're going to move on to round number 17 next. So let's move on to round number 17. You can choose any stitch that you wish and that one that I had that where I put the two together just treat that as one stitch when you're going to do it and I would treat it as a back post. So maybe start with the one before if you decided to do that and start with the stitch right before it and just attach the yarn and now I want you to do a front post double crochet around this same post down here. So the chaining of one is just having us start in a position so that this will be the right height. Now this is considered one stitch so just do a back post double crochet and just treat it as if it's one stitch and then pull it back for the back post double crochet. It hides it better. If you leave that on the front side it will be a lot more noticeable. So the next one is a front post double crochet and then the next one is a back post double crochet and you're just gonna alternate between the two stitches going all the way around and this would be how you would complete round number 17. I'll be back in a moment at the end of this round. I'm coming up to the end of number 17. The last stitch should be a back post double crochet. That's only keeping the right counts of front, back, front, back all the way around and then I just need you to slip stitch to the top of the first front post double crochet and this color Choose a color that you think is really gonna pop like really accenting. We're gonna do some clusters. It almost kind of reminds me of a bushel of flowers. So I'm gonna choose probably the pink color to make this kind of duller color just kind of have its place but have a really big pop in the end. Let's begin number 18 in a moment. Let's begin round number 18. 
So just create the, this and I want you to start with the front post double crochet. It doesn't matter which one and that's where we're gonna begin our journey. And to start this one I need you just to attach it and then chain two. The chain two won't count as anything. It's just a builder. We're gonna do what is called as a cluster stitch and there's gonna be four double crochets in order to make that happen. So starting in the same stitch just double crochet and it's basically four together really. So four together double crochet. So just going in pull through two and hold and do that three more times. You will end up with five loops on the hook. Okay, so that was the original chain two. There's the four and then what I need you to do at this point is that we need to um, just be able to jump and so that's what we're gonna concentrate on next. So once you get that just pull through all four and then chain two and then jump to the next front post double crochet. So you're skipping the back post stuff in behind. So just start and do your cluster. It's a four together double crochet technically. Okay, once you see your five loops you're done. Pull through, chain two and then move on to the next front post double uh, crochet there and there's gonna be a total of 80 of these going all the way around. So there's a lot and I'll see you at the end of this round in a moment. This is round number 18. So I'm coming close to the end and I'm making sure I just get in every front post double crochet all filled in with these clusters with the chain two space in between as we mentioned. Now you're just gonna chain two and you'll join it to the top of the first cluster. Join it right there. Shoot out right there and I want you to end this color unless you wanna keep it of course and, and in the next round what we're going to do is that we're gonna slam in some single crochets in between the clusters which will help push those out and we're going to continue to round number 19 which will be the end of today's video. So let's begin round number 19 which is the ending. So what you wanna do is that you just wanna go into a chain two space anyone will do and just do a standing single crochet. That's considered one of three. So then in the same space put two more. The only complicated thing about this round is that what are you gonna put on television? <laughs> so coming into the next space just three single crochets and you're gonna do that all the way around. So don't worry about the clusters itself. Just work within the spaces and this will push those clusters away from each other and have more of a defined look at the end. So three single crochets in each chain two space around to conclude then round number 19 and I'll be back in a moment. So coming up to the end of round number 19 all the spaces are filled. Just join it to the beginning single crochet. I'm going to fasten off and I'm gonna see you next time in the next video. The next round is gonna blow your mind. Actually that whole next uh, video may blow your mind. That's why there's only just uh, a few rounds instead of a lot so that you can concentrate on doing it right. So this is it and uh, it's actually looking pretty cool. I'm actually really excited that I'm doing it random. I'm just picking the yarn from my box as I go and um, you will notice that this has a bit of texture to it so don't worry about it if you don't see it sitting flat. Um, in the end it's gonna look amazing. You watch and see. This is the end of this video and I'll see you next time as we continue the study of the journey. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye.